Hi, I'm Pete Coker. I'm the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Martin Aircraft Company. Martin Aircraft Company made the uh, Martin Jetpack. Uh, in the days of old, back in the 1950s and 60s, we all dreamed of the fact that we like to get airborne in a, in a jetpack. Well, this dream is now turning to reality. In the 1980s, uh, Mr. Glenn Martin decided he was going to dedicate his life to creating this machine. This is the Martin Jetpack. The actual aircraft itself is, uh, can be flown either man or, or unmanned at the time. As we go past the aircraft, let me explain a little bit about how it works. The first things you see here are the two ducted fans, one either side. The ducted fans are actually joined together by a belt and they're actually connected to an engine stored in the back here. The engine itself, it presently is a V4 uh, two-stroke engine of 200 horsepower and it can fly for about uh, 30 minutes at the moment. It carries 45 litres of fuel. The air itself gets accelerated and gets moved under the ducts and you see we use uh, vectored thrust in order to provide the direction as well. The aircraft is actually controlled by fly-by-wire which means that actually you are flying it through a computer. On this particular aircraft we have two controls. This particular control on the left hand side it provides you with your height so you go up when you twist it upwards and down when you actually go down and when you leave it in the middle, the aircraft will stay exactly the same height that you've selected. So it'll make all the adjustments for you yourself. In order to move the aircraft forward or backwards, then we use this control here. And you just demand a position that you really want to work on and move it forward or back. The great advantage of this machine is, of course, with it not being a helicopter, we don't need to have that tail rotor. So we can actually go backwards the same tire speed as we can go forwards, which is around about 74 kilometers per hour. In order to turn the aircraft, we don't have a wing, so we use a lot more of, of yaw and just move it around. And as we would move that, so the actual vector thrust would move at the same time. Safety is paramount in this aircraft, and it's built around safety and reliability. However, if it really does go wrong, we have a ballistic parachute. The ballistic parachute has been designed specifically for the Martin Jetpack. It will work in a way that actually means that whatever happens at whatever height, doesn't matter how low, you will always survive in this aircraft. It is the safest, one of the safest aircraft in the world. The way that we're going to actually use this aircraft is we're really targeting the first responders. These are the fire, police, ambulance, uh, border security and more importantly natural disaster recovery. Being able to fly it in either the manned or the unmanned allows us to configure what we require for the situation that we're in. After the manned flight has been used for the, uh, the first responder then we'll be targeting other areas in the commercial sector, particularly around uh, areas of uh, fishery protection and perhaps farming, uh, agriculture and areas such as mining as well. And finally, not to be left out, of course, when we've finished all that, our final product will be for the personal jetpack, the personal user to be able to move around the country as he sees fit. We're actually targeting right now uh, around about 200,000 US dollars per unit, but obviously over time we'll look at that depending upon how many and how the supply chain actually operates. So this is it. This is the Martin Jetpack. This is now the dream has become reality. No longer are we dreaming of the Jetsons, no longer are we dreaming of uh, James Bond. We can actually be it, and this is the aircraft for us. So as a company, where are we going? Right now, we're in the taking the aircraft from this prototyping staging into production. That production will occur such that we can deliver to customers in the second half of 2016. But what about the future? Well, it's really around what you dream you can do with it. The ability for us to fly manned or unmanned means we can actually carry a payload of 120 kilograms. 120 kilograms means you can either have a pilot in here or you can fly it with supplies or anything else that you wanted to move around. You can actually fly this thing with other areas like cameras and put on it and use it for surveillance if you so wish. We have the ability in the future also of operating as a mule train, which actually has six different aircraft, one manned and five electronically tethered behind us. Because we're at flight 
fly-by-wire and if you let go of the controls it actually stays in that position in the sky, it means you can automatically take control from the one behind you which is unmanned and fly that remotely down to where you might need to go. For the future, we're looking for over-the-horizon capabilities as well. There's potential military applications. Ship-to-ship -ship transfer is one of those areas that people are looking at. Uh, other areas are re uh, resupply for logistics for forward operating bases and areas perhaps looking for uh, um, explosive devices, something along those lines as well. So really surveillance is an area, again, that the military might well ask, offer us to us. But of course there is the search and rescue back into it again and again that is our, one of our primary targets early on.